All right, so today is March 16th, 2015. Um, people are just loading up questions right now, getting set up. Recording started. So this week, um, I figure I'd announce it before we get started. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll have the link up probably in a, in a day or two, and it'll be in your news feed. But what I'm gonna do is a. Um, more of a specialized coaching session this week. Uh, it actually might be a week or two. Um, it'll be a little longer. I'm actually going to cover specific topics. Um, I'm going to go in depth into anchor text URL and stuff like that. Because I mean that's really still the most important thing. So I just really want to cover that in depth. Uh, we're actually call, calling it uh, March, April, May Mastery. You know, it's it's going to be my series for that. So I'm going to cover that in depth. I'm going to cover PBNs in depth. I'm going to cover on-page setup in depth. Um, and then just a little bit about like social sites and, and stuff like that. All right. So that will probably be Friday, uh, starting at eight o'clock Eastern time, eight o'clock at night Eastern time. I'll probably run that like eight to ten, something like that. <clears throat> Where I'll I'll go over those topics. You know, we'll see how far we get, and then I'll field questions for a little bit. But it'll mainly be just me hitting home uh, on stuff. You know, we'll start with anchor text and URL. I'm actually going to recover the lesson I did in Cotton's webinar uh, on the 4th, in case anyone missed that, because it seems like that really helped a lot of people. So I'll probably recover that. Uh, you know, I'll go over the sites I went over, and I might, I might actually take it a little deeper, okay? So we'll go into that, and then we'll, just, we'll go into specific stuff, more specific stuff about Anchor Text URL, <clears throat> and then, of course, everything else. And I'll, you know, I'll field questions at the end. If, if we need multiple webinars on those topics, I'll, I'll do them. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and uh, get to these questions. Just taking a screenshot here. All right, this is from you, Sin. My home page is a PA 19, DA is 12, but my city keyword is not in the URL. It's a brand, but if I make an internal page of my keyword, it will be. Should I rank my internal page for my city SEO since it has the keyword in the URL string? The only problem is I would be starting from PA 1. What is your take on this? Should I rank my home page for my keyword since it's kind of set up more with PA, or will it be faster to rank my internal page? Uh, I mean, it depends how the site's set up, you send. If it's a site where the home page is targeted to, you know, it's just a branded, like, like for example, if it was like gregsseo.com, and Greg's SEO is targeting Delaware SEO, I would target it to the home page. But, I mean, if it's like a larger topic, like maybe it's a site about SEO and you cover different areas of SEO, then you would want to create on that inner URL. I wouldn't worry as much about the page authority. Um, I would worry more about the, the end goal. You know, because the page authority is not super high anyways, and um, it, it's more important, I would say, to stick to the theme of the site. So it just depends on what, I mean, if the main topic of your site is what you're thinking about doing the inner URL on, I'd probably just do it to the home page, me personally. Again, and keep the theme of the site. All right, from Charles, when creating a DAS stack, must I use different email for each Web 2.0? Also, I have to use a unique IP when editing the various Web 2.0. Uh, Charles, I would save that for a uh, for a Network Empire uh, event because I mean, usually what I do for my DAS stacks is I'll just have someone else create the accounts. Um, usually, like a Fiverr gig. There's people who do like IFTTT, you know, just use those accounts uh, or other services where they create the accounts for me. And I've never had problems with any of the accounts I've had uh, from those types of people. But you can just go to Fiverr and search like IFTTT and look for people who set those up. You can use those gigs or you can, you know, get them elsewhere. So, but if you want, I mean, if you want like specifics about if you're setting them up, I would ask in the Network Empire. All right, from Charles, I've been trying to bid on GoDaddy auctions using Register Compass. So far, I keep seeing domains going for around 150 to 200. I watch your video on pricing. Got any tax on how to bid on how to maximize your bids? Look for lower domain authority. Um, you know. People place everything on domain authority, and it's not all about domain authority. You know, like people say, "Well, I got a, a thirty domain authority site," and that doesn't really mean anything because, uh, I mean, a thirty domain authority can be weaker than a fifteen domain authority. It comes down to the quality of the links. 
Like if you have authority, domain authority, and most of those links are no follow, it's 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 not going to be that powerful. So you gotta understand that's just Moz's like domain authority is just Moz's estimate of how powerful the domain is, and they get a lot of things wrong with that. Like they give too much credit to no follow. They don't give enough credit to like government need to links. So. <clears throat> I mean, demand authority is, is just a number that they use to gauge the power of a site. You got to look deeper into that. So that's what I mean when I'm saying you just got to dig deeper. Just, you know, look at stuff like that, like lower demand authority, uh, lower page, because a lot of people still look at page rank. You can go lower page rank, no page rank. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to really dig deep. All right, from Charles, again, I saw a video that you work in some of your keywords for you that you're targeting into the PBN content before linking out to the money site was the purpose of doing this. I just think it's weird to just mention a, a, a specific keyword once and it being a link, Charles. I mean, to me, I think it's just safer to have that somewhere else in the content. Like, um, you know, if you have like a general article on lawyers and you don't mention St. Louis at all, and then the only time you mention like St. Louis lawyers is when you link to it. I don't. Uh, I mean, I think just to be safe, it's better just to mention at least St. Louis somewhere somewhere else in the article. I mean, that's just my look on it and how the algorithms work. All right, from Gaurav, what kind of theme PBNs would be appropriate to rank a YouTube video and or website for freight logistics company? I think the theming of the PBN is where I'm the most unclear and second-guessing myself. Yeah, a lot of people get this confused. I don't look for themed PBNs as far as the links go, usually. If they're themed with the links, like the anchor text and relevant sites, of course that's a big boost, but usually I don't even... Most of my, my PBNs that I get are just on some random topic. You know, politics, uh, fish, uh, biking event, uh, charity... And then I'll link it to anything because Google has a lot of tr trouble distinguishing relevancy. Um, and, and I have a video on that, that that I've talked about before. Look for it in the news feed. I did it about maybe three weeks ago where I talk about why that is. From Charles, when creating a DAS stack, must I use a different email? For, okay, we just went over that. All right, from James, if we already use the exact search anchors and we're still not on the first page, what variation should we use for local search term plus city? Example, if I want to rank for Chicago Plumber and I've used that anchor already, should I use Chicago IL Plumber or would that push up the search Chicago Plumber? Absolutely, James. Um, you know, actually one of my favorites to use as far as anchor text is um, is like, like uh, maybe Chicago Plumber Company. All right, or Chicago Plumber Service, or services, whatever. All right, so I love doing like the keyword plus another word with it, and that works very well for bumping it up. And then you can also rank for some long tail because this is going to help you rank really well for Chicago Plumber Company, but it's also going to give you a good boost for Chicago Plumber. All right. And another thing I'll do is like if, um, for example, if the site is like you know theplumbers.com, I'll do like theplumbers.com das or dash Chicago plumbers or plumber whatever all right so stuff like that as well works very well and I, I love that you're asking anchor text questions because that means you understand how important it is that's awesome from Charles I've been trying to bid on GoDaddy auctions using register compass okay we already went over that one From Jay, I know that you said in the past to create separate social accounts for social signals for each money site, but if your social accounts are generic in nature, couldn't you link to different money sites then? People post all sorts of links on their social accounts all the time. I only have four sites that I manage. It would be okay to do that for lower number of sites. I don't think you can put multiple sites in like the like your website section though, can you Jay? I mean, if you can, you probably can do that. It probably wouldn't be as safe. Uh, but I think there's only one website you can put in for a lot of those social places. Like, I know, like, Twitter, you can only put in one website. 
Like, you know, when you have a, uh, let's go to our Twitter for Iowa City. Oh, by the way, the, the Iowa City SEO site, uh, we're on the second page now for Iowa SEO. I haven't even done anything uh, except for what I showed on the uh, Over the Shoulder series. And we bumped up to number 12, 13, 14, number 16 for Iowa SEO. You know, we haven't even really pushed for that, so that's pretty cool. And there's our Facebook, there's our Yelp. Um, then, of course, Iowa City SEO, we're now dominating. Uh, one, two, three, four, and then number seven for Manta. But we are going to look at the Twitter. Is Twitter still ranked anywhere? The Twitter page fell off. I'm thinking that's over-optimized. So I might have to go in and, and make some posts on the Twitter account uh, that don't talk as much about like Iowa City SEO because I think that's over-optimized. That's the only property that's not doing well. It really fell off. Um, what was the URL? Twitter.com. Was it Iowa City SEO? No. I forget what it was. But I just wanted to show that I think there was only like one spot for a link, like for Twitter. Facebook, you might be able to do multiple links, but that's what I'd be more worried about. Uh, Jay, I think, is who asked that question. Yeah. All right, from Charles. All right, we answered that one. Do we have to have H1 of the keyword we are targeting in the PBN article? No. I, I wouldn't say you need that. I mean, you can play with it. Uh, but you definitely don't need an H1. I, I rarely even put H1s in my articles. All right, from Steve, I'm trying to rank a YouTube video for a client. The niche is fairly small, and the keyword I'm going for has around 720 per month. Title description tags are all good, but the video doesn't show up in the Google SERPs. So I ordered a 5 gig for 30 manual bookmarks of the video to start with. I wasn't expecting to get page 1 from this, but it's still not showing up at all in the first 20 pages. The only thing I'm not sure about is the name of the video file before it was uploaded of YouTube as it was uploaded by the company before I had them as client. Understand that the keyword should be in the name of the video file before uploading to YouTube. Is that enough to stop it ranking in the SERPs? Or should I just try to push past this by throwing more 5 gigs at it? Um, I would say that's... N I mean, it's, it would help, Steve, but it's, that's probably not the problem. I mean, bookmarking just isn't super powerful, especially for something with 720 searches. Um... So, 720 searches in a local niche actually is fairly competitive for for local. Um, so my guess you're going to need some stronger links with descriptive anchor text. With bookmarking, you can't really do descriptive anchor text uh, like you can with like you know if if you go and do like a PBN to it, you can totally control the anchor text and do do the exact keyword. So I would either go with like PBN type links or at least like Web 2.0, something like that, where you can get more keyword optimized anchor text in there. Because 720 is not, you know, for, for like local, like a lot of like lawyers and stuff like that have like 720, and they can actually be really competitive. All right, from Yasin, what are your exact steps for ranking anything? Do you always put social to rank or social explosion to rank? Want to rank in something competitive? Should I just fire PBNs in my site, in my social sites, and then use social explosion? I mean, if it's really competitive, you send. What I would do is, um, I would set up social accounts for it. You know, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, the more you set up, the, the better. There's tons of social sites out there. The more you say, the more you set up, the better. Uh, that will give you kind of that base, a little bit of trust going. And then from there, it just depends how aggressive you want to be. You can start sending PBNs directly to the site. Make sure you see my video on that, you know, just the cautions of it. Um, or you can, you know, power up your uh, social stuff and maybe some Web 2.0 type stuff and see where, see where you land from there. Uh, and then after that, you can start firing PBNs at the site because then you'll really have that kind of base, more trust built. But, I mean, if it's, if it's very competitive, I make sure that I solid the site out correctly 
Uh, you know, I make sure the, the URLs are all correct and all that. Set up my social. Um, yeah, pretty much always use Social Explosion on, on my big money sites. Um, and then from there, I'd probably start firing PBNs directly at the site if it was me. All right. From Jay, RSS chart drawn in the RSX explain video shows that you should not link PBN to PBN. I thought this was acceptable. Am I wrong? I don't know what that video is, Jay. I would ask whoever put that up, but I don't link PBN to PBN. No. Should you only do one backlink per PBN to your money site? I was under the impression that you could have several backlinks from one PBN site to your money site as long as it was not from the same PBN URL page. Consistently going to the same money site URL page is this not true? I mean, you can even go to the same page, um, the, the same URL, J, multiple times. It just might not give you like a, a you know, the type of boost you're looking for. I usually just do one per URL, um, but but yeah, you can link to multiple URLs on a money site. I wouldn't do it over and over and over again. Like, you know, PBN1, you link to like four pages of a money site. PBN2, you link to like three. PBN3, maybe you link to like six. Like, I wouldn't keep doing that. I would more do like PBN1, maybe you link to just one page. PBN2, maybe you link to two or three. Uh, PBN3, go back to just linking to one page. You know, PBN4, maybe you link to multiple pages again. But I wouldn't do like multiple pages, multiple pages, multiple pages. Like, don't try to avoid that. But linking to multiple pages from a money site on a PBN is fine to do. Just be careful to keep to, to not do it over and over and over again. You're welcome, Jay. Can you send backlinks to more than one money site from the same PBN if it was within the same niche theme? Or yeah, it doesn't matter uh, about that. Just as long as the content is about the niche, Jay. At least currently. All right, I have an expired domain I bought as a money site. Unfortunately, I launched this site. Raise Google did the latest update where they put more emphasis on DAPA. I have been doing decent in the rankings just off on-page optimization. The problem is whenever I send social signals or branded anchor text to my site from PBNs, a massive percentage of my rankings disappear immediately after doing so. Thoughts? Um... I've never really seen that myself, Jay, so I'm not sure. Uh, it might just be a temporary thing. I don't know how long it's been. You left, so I don't know how long it's been. Or, like, how long after you send the links that happens or whatever. But, um, yeah, I haven't seen that yet. Unless it unless it's like it's de-indexed or something. I would make sure it's still indexed. And that's why we also give caution about, you know, using expired domains for money sites, because uh, they can get. That that's why I don't necessarily recommend it. I've, I of course still do it, uh, but I don't want to recommend it because there's, you know, there's weird things that can happen like that. Although I haven't seen this specific thing. All right, from Octavio, hey Greg, since Google can't see Facebook ownership, is it okay to have multiple? Money site Facebook page is owned by my personal Facebook account. I mean, I do it, Octavio, and I haven't had a problem with it. Uh, Network Empire will probably tell you to not do that. Just do one per money site. Um, but I, I mean, for for me, I do have like multiple pages from from my personal account. Like I think I have Iowa City SEO on my personal account, and a couple of my old eSig sites. I mean, I wouldn't like overstack them, um, and just know there probably is more risk involved if you do that. But, but I mean, I I do it a little bit. Although some people are going to tell you not to do it. From Gad, when searching for expired domains for PBNs, trying to determine if the PBN is penalized by using the search in Google for domain com, if the domain has been inactive. And it only has a blank page. Sometimes I see that it's not ranking on the first page. Would this mean it's probably penalized, or could it be because it has been banned? Yeah, you can't. Unfortunately, Gad, you can't judge penalties until the site's been up, uh, until you actually put on 
put up WordPress, put on content. It's funny you mention that because I've actually been testing with to see if I can find if it has a P, if it has a penalty during like the auction phase, and you just can't. There, there's so far I haven't found anything. Like, cause I'll, I'll have sites that. It, when they're in auction phase, it won't show up at all. When I do like the main names, Spacecom, like it won't show up anywhere. But then when I put up the site, it's extremely strong. It, it responds extremely well to like my title checks and and you know like the main Spacecom, of course. Uh, so unfortunately, when it's in the auction phase, I, I haven't found anything yet that, that checks for penalties. But I'm, I'm playing with it still. Steve, I'm trying to rank my site in a city that I don't live in, so I don't have an address there to do citations. I'm on a really tight budget at the moment, so I don't, so not looking to get a virtual address just yet. If I create citations for this website to my home address, this won't help me rank the seven pack in the city. Will it still help my organic? Yeah, it will help your organic, Steve, because I mean it's sending you know juice to your site. But Steve, you can check out. Uh, Joe Marfaglio's videos on <clears throat> how to do the the forward the mail forwarding. I've used that on a couple sites and it works perfectly. Uh, basically, what you do is you you find a and it's a little borderline. You find a um, he uses he tells talks about it in the video, but he uses um, some service that. You, where you find commercial real estate, and he'll find like a commercial real estate building for lease or sale in the city that he's trying to rank. He'll take that address, he'll add a suite to it, and then he'll go to the post office and forward that to his home or, or to an address that he has access to. Because that what happens if even if mail gets sent there, first of all, it's a non-existent because you're just adding on a suite or something like that, which which doesn't exist anyway, so no one's going to get that mail. And second of all, you're forwarding it to your own address. So Google can't see that the mail's forwarded, but but the U.S. mail know it's forwarded. So you can actually use that address and still get the mail. But he, he has a video explaining on how to do that. I've used it, and it does work. <clears throat> Looks like uh, audio first for Jay. That's why he left, but I don't see anyone else complaining about it. All right, from Peter, how does Google check the content on a PBN? Do you see a problem in having content in different languages on a PBN linking out to sites in different countries? Also, is there a problem to take a .com and put only content in German on it? I'm not sure, Peter, because I've never done that. Um, I would probably ask that in the Facebook group for foreign people to see what they've done with that. I've just never experimented with with foreign stuff, so I'm not, I'm unsure on that one. But I I can tell you, Peter, that I have taken PBNs that are in different languages, like you know maybe it was an old Spanish website and just it has strong links even from all Spanish sites, and I'll link it out to an English site and it works fine. Uh, so I, so I can tell you that. But if you keep repeating that over and over and over and over again, I don't know if they'll catch on or not. But when I mix it in here and there, it does work. I can tell you that much. <clears throat> what the heck? There we go. All right, I'm not clear on the difference and benefits of file and no-file links and when and where you use them. Chris Marshall was talking about using a no-file link with the local lead explosion created site when linking out, and it is confusing to me. Please clarify these type of links. Uh, I mean, the way Google explains it is if it's no follow, they're not going to give credit to the link. So, for example, if you link out to something and you make it no follow, you're not using juice to that to that specific thing you're linking to. So, like a lot of people, they avoid linking out to a lot of stuff because they think that 
it it gives less power to what they're the the main purpose of what they're linking to. For example, like if you link out to your money site and three authority sites, people worry that those three authority sites that, that they're linking to will steal the juice from the the main purpose of linking out to the money site. So some people like create just make them no follow to save that juice for the follow link. Me personally, I don't worry about that. I'd rather let Google know that I'm linking out to trusted sites. I'm not using SEO tricks to save link juice for for the the place that I really want to link to. I I I link sometimes I'll link out to five six authority sites with a PBN just to, and one one money site, you know, and I play with that stuff, <clears throat> and I think that looks very natural because I mean you're linking out to five trusted sources and you're kind of placing your money site with those five trusted sources, so. I mean, the, the way I look at it is I don't even really mess with nofollow, to be honest. All right, from James. Okay, so if I've used Chicago Plumber as my anchor, if I use the plumber.com dash Chicago Plumber, that's still safe. Absolutely, James. Definitely still safe. That's actually good. Um, you know, it gets your brand in there, and it also gets your keyword. So you're kind of getting a, a double there. That's That's very safe, though. <laughs> All right, from James, do you recommend using Hide My WP plugin? It's used to hide that the website is on WordPress. <clears throat> I've never used it, James, um, but I don't see any problem with using it. All right, from you, Sin, do we need to be careful for anchor text? If we send anchor text that are not the same as the page title, but it's not the URL like the KLKS example. I mean, not necessarily. The, the reason that I said to do that, you said, was just to be extra safe. Um, really, if you send anchor text, it's the same as the page title, uh, or the same as the URL, is probably, I think, of what I said. You'll probably be fine, but, I mean, that's just an extra safety precaution. There's kind of, like, no reason to do that when there's so many other things that are still going to boost you up a, a ton, like taking the reverse of the URL or just taking a, like, an LSI version first. So, but I mean, doing that exact URL, you know, like an anchor text of the, what the exact URL is probably is not going to hurt you. I just say that more to, to keep it safe. From Charles, Stephen told me that pointing PBN to Yelp does not pass link juice to the money site. If I am ranking my city SEO, would you still recommend me to point PBN to my Yelp? Sorry, I have a limited amount of PBNs. I want to maximize it for my site. I mean, if if the if the place you're linking to has a link going to your money site, it's it's gonna power it up, All right? Charles, I'm trying to rank branded site for my city SEO keywords for anchor text variations. Is it okay to use keywords like digital marketing agency, city, internet marketing company or related keywords to SEO? Yeah. Welcome, Rob. All right. So a Fiverr gave regarding the DAS follow-up questions. So you would use someone like this and just change the keyword and anchor text pointing around. Um, no, I would use something more like, like stuff like this and this. I think I've actually used this guy and he works well, Template Titans. Yeah, so this guy, um,
I've used him before, and I'll do like humanized profiles where they, they you know, they'll set up like an image, they'll fill out the profile and all that. Uh, I'll do, usually do Gmail verified. And then if you're actually using IFTTT, you can have them do a full setup. And whole, they'll actually set up everything in IFTTT. And for 25 bucks, you have all these social accounts, uh, plus to set up an IFTTT if you want to use it for that. But there's other guys like this where they'll actually let you pick the social platforms that they create links for. So you know, I don't know if he lets you do it, but there's other similar services where you can tell them, look, I want Facebook, I want Twitter, I want Delicious, I want LinkedIn, I want, you know, you can give them up to like 20 things and they'll go create it for like five bucks. And then if you want them like phone verified, it's like an extra five, something like that. But whenever I've used like this guy's and, and the one I'm talking about, I don't know the exact gig. I've never had problems with it, with like with the social accounts. So, all right, from Steve, I want to rank my site in a few different cities, so I want to create a couple of duplicates of my home page and rank each one in different city, as I know duplicate content is not a problem for local at the moment. Do you know how I can make duplicate of my home pages or? Perhaps a WordPress plugin you can recommend for this. I don't, Steve. I think a lot of people just copy the article and just put it, you know, in, in another page. And then they'll, they'll just change the location up that, that they want to rank for. But you can ask uh, Cotton if you want to know specifically what he's done. Cause he, I mean, he does it all the time. But I'm pretty sure he just copies the article and just puts it on another page, if, if I'm correct. All right, from you, Sin, my video is on the second page. In a local niche, it only gets 30 searches per month, and it's stuck. I sent 500 gigs, but it's not moving. I mean, you might just need a little, a couple stronger links or more time you send, or more keyword optimized anchor text. You know, there's a lot of things I don't know about the video, so. All right, from Larry, how many PBNs on the same hosting as your money site would you feel it's safe to link to your money site? I usually try to avoid that, Larry. Um, but, I mean, it really depends on the size of the host. Like, if you have both on HostGator, as long as they're on different IPs, of course, that would probably be fine to start with, um, but I typically try to do different host th than my money site for the most part. All right, from Octavio. Thing is, if I do one by money site, the owner's profile wouldn't have friends or anything; would look fake. You, you would just have to add friends and all that, Octavio. From Rob, I have been contacted by a potential client looking to break into semi-competitive market. It appears most of the parcel exact match domain surrounding the bigger keywords are taken. I suggested using a branded domain instead of any exact match partial. Can you provide your opinion on branded versus exact match partial. I know the initial training suggests in my city SEO, which can be tricky. Yeah, I mean branded. The, the, the benefit of branded is you don't have to worry as much about over-optimization. Uh, you can send keyword optimized anchor text right away to branded sites and be very safe. Whereas exact parcel match, you have to be a little more careful. Um, but at the same time, if you get it right with exact parcel match, it, it can be extremely powerful. So, I mean, those are the two differences. And also, I would say branded... You can kind of do more with a branded site. If you have an exact partial match, then, I mean, you're stuck to that specific topic. So, I mean, that's the other negative. But, I mean, either way, I do both, and, and both are good. Just know that with a branded, you can, you, can uh, you know, you're safer with optimization. You can send that keyword optimized anchor text right away. Whereas exact partial, you got to be a little more careful. And that's the main difference. From Grav, have you seen any issues with pointing PDNs to money sites, which also use the Google Webmaster tool? No. I have not personally. 
Yeah, and you actually mentioned fervor optimization. That's 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 exactly right, Rob. Uh, and that those are the main differences. Sorry to bug you, but I had to log in again. I did just in time to hear the answer to my question. Oh, great. You're welcome, Steve. You're welcome, John. From Jamie, still going through videos, but I'm aware that plural versus singular words help each other when ranking for keywords that aren't technically the same keyword for anchor text, correct? Yes. Does capitalization affect keywords at all? No, uh, no I wouldn't say uh, it does, Jamie. Although I will mix that type of stuff in here and there. You know what I mean? Just, just a... A super extra precaution. I mean, if you if you haven't been, I would not worry about it one bit. But I mean, it's just another little kind of randomization thing you can add in where you've you know some of your anchor text is, has capital in it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Very welcome, Charles. What do you use to power up your DAS? I mean, I keep DAS pretty simple, Carl. Uh, for me, it's just putting properties on you know putting like for example let's go to google um let me find someone's about that me profile I mean, this is just a random person's about that me profile. I mean, typically I keep DAS pretty simple. So let's see how this guy really has his setup. Um, looking for links. Okay, so this guy has two outbound links on his. Like, he has this True Venture site, which must be his, and then this article. Um, so, w what I do is I set up sites like, you know, About.me, and there, there's tons of sites out there you can do this type of stuff on. But you could put, like, in your About.me, you can put your Facebook, your Twitter, your, um, you know, your YouTube videos, your. LinkedIn profile, you can put like a whole bunch of your socials, and then when you hit this about.me page, it's going to hit everything on this about.me. So, I mean, that's, I, I keep DAS pretty simple in, in, in regards to that, where I'll just use sites like about.me, about.us, uh, bit.ly, you know, bit.ly bundles, um, there's a couple other ones where you can easily fit a lot of links on there. And I'll just fit a lot of my bigger social properties on, hit these things, and then that passes juice on to all my socials, which, of course, link to my money. So, I mean, that's that's usually as simple as I keep DAS. Um, you know, I know a lot of people take it further with success, but I keep it pretty simple and do it like that. And I use PBNs usually, Coral. But you can use other other forms of linking as well. All right, so we got another three questions. As as more questions roll in, I'm just going to run to the bathroom really quick, guys. So I'll be right back. When I get back, I'm sure there'll be some more questions. Larry, I'm, I'm just starting with this concept with PBNs and thought I'd just start with the hosting and I have to start with. All right, just let me know if you have a question on that, Larry. All right, from Peter, what amount of trust flow and citation flow are decent for PBNs? Can you elaborate more on these metrics? Honestly, Peter, I don't look at that much. I know a lot of other people do. I mainly look at, uh, I'll use domain authority to kind of gauge or to use as like a filter and then I'll make sure that it has strong backlinks going to it or, or you know good backlinks going to it relevant to what the site's about so for example if it was a site that used to be on like environmental stuff 
something like environmental, I want the links going to that site being about the environment. You know, it's at least something similar because that that tells me natural links. You, you know what I mean? So that's that's the main thing that I look for. Uh, and then of course that they have decent domain authority page authority going to them. All right, from Celine, I have a partial match domain for my city SEO. It has the word SEO, but not my city name in it. If I send links for my PBN to my social properties, what anchor text should I use? For instance, if I want to rank for Dallas SEO, should I use Facebook to link to my Facebook page or Dallas SEO or something like Facebook page Dallas SEO expert for the anchor text? Probably a mix of all of that, Celine. Um, let's see. With your domain, you only have SEO in it, so you don't have to be like super careful of that. Um, I would probably start with something like Dallas SEO. Um, go into that, and then I might do like maybe like Dallas SEO Facebook page or Facebook, either one without page, doesn't matter. And I might do a URL link, like the Facebook URL, just to be safe. And then kind of see where it, where, where it takes from there. I mean that's that's the basic structure I, I would follow. If you want to be super safe, you can put like the Facebook URL first, and then go into keyword. You know, and then you know it just depends how safe you want to be. You know, you could do that. That'd be pretty safe. But this this would be a pretty safe uh, one to follow. Facebook URL, exact keyword, Dallas SEO Facebook page, you know, Facebook page here, then something like Dallas SEO company. You kind of just follow that pattern if you want to be safe. When do you use Social Explosion? I uh, pretty much always use it, you I use it. I use it on my PBNs and my money sites. Yeah, usually with PBNs, Rob, but I mean, you can hit them with honestly. I don't want to say anything because I don't want people to get in trouble with their anchor text. I mean, like, but you can hit those properties with stuff like GSA if you know what you're doing with your anchor text. Um, and right now that works. It, you know, it could not work in the future, but right now that works. If you're going to do that, I recommend you just you stay heavy on branded and and like URL type stuff. So. For example, if I'm hitting something with like spammy type stuff, I'm doing, let's say we're hitting like, um, you know, about.me, Greg Morrison or something like this. Like this is the about.me URL. I'm mostly doing branded and generic anchor text. So, you know, URL, uh, URL, in no particular order. Um, about that me page, uh, about that me, Greg Morrison, and of course, let's say like this this page had on it like Nashville SEO. I'm not I'm not branding it towards Nashville SEO. I'm branding it towards what the about that me URL is. And if this was if this was Nashville SEO, you'd want to be careful hitting that with Nashville SEO. I probably wouldn't brand it in that way. I'd just do more of the about that me branding. But since it's my name. And we're targeting Nashville SEO. I can brand it with my name, all right. So then stuff like Greg Morrison about that me page. So that would be like a long branding, and then you'd want to do a, st a whole bunch of stuff like website, click here, you know, this page, stuff like that. And very rarely mix in stuff about Nashville SEO, like not much at all, because ma mainly what you want to do is just juice this page up with stuff like this, and then maybe a couple times you mix in. Nashville SEO, you know what I mean? But you would want that very, very seldomly. Like, literally, you'd probably want this much anchor text for every one keyword you have, maybe even a little more to be safe. So you really just want to mix up. And, of course, all of this from this down would be different generic and branded anchor text. You just want as much branded and generic anchor text as you want and then just mix in very little keyword. You can even make this longer type stuff if you want to be even a little more safe. But the important thing is don't optimize for the keywords you're targeting too much when you're doing mass links. Stay away from that.
All right, how do you, from Carlos, how do you link from social sites to your money site effectively? You just link in the profile section, Carlos. Like, there's usually a, a uh, place where you can put in your website name. Let's go to a Twitter page. Actually, I know how we can get to the Iowa City SEO Twitter. That was the Iowa SEO expert. So, for example, for this, um, you see the website is right here. There's just a spot when you log into Twitter where you can put in. It'll ask you like, "What is your website?" and I'll put it in right here. All right, but but again, I think this. We were talking about this earlier. I think this is actually over optimized. If you look, you know, we mentioned SEO, SEO, SEO. I always said SEO, SEO. I always said SEO. Um, Social media, social media, reputation management. Like we keep mentioning the same stuff over and over. So I'm guessing that's why this page is not doing well. I think it's just over optimized. Again, here we mentioned Iowa City SEO again. So it doesn't have much content. And the content that it does have that Google's pulling, and here it is, you know, in our description Iowa City SEO, marketing services, web design, social media management, reputation management. We're repeating these keywords over and over. So I actually did a bad job of uh, making tweets. I shouldn't have optimized it as much with keywords. So to play with this, what I would probably do is I'm going to start tweeting out, if I can remember to do this, I'll start tweeting out tweets that don't have my keywords in it to drive down the keyword density, and I'll see if that helps. But I mean, I'm not obviously not too worried about one page not ranking or one property not ranking. Because we, we're pretty much taking up the first half of the page. But I'm just kind of using that for example. That's probably why it's not ranking. Right, from Cindy, I have a couple domains that are relevant to my main site, but I don't really use them. They're on the same host now as the main sites. Could I switch them to different hosts and use them for PBNs? Yeah. As long as they're you know healthy sites, that should be fine. Gad, do you use GSA for anything, or is it pretty much old news? I personally don't, Gad, but but I know people that do successfully. I just don't honestly know how to use it yet. I never took the time to learn it, uh, or else I might. I'd probably be experimenting with it a lot, but I might eventually learn it, or you know, something like Magic Submitter, and just just to play around with it. But obviously, you can do it without it, because I do. How to check if my site is indexed? You go to Google. And you type in site colon site name dot com or dot org whatever. Now this tells me there is a site out there with site name dot com. This is called site name dot com that is indexed. All right, so we got results for that. If it was not indexed, it comes up like this. So I'm just doing a whole bunch of random characters dot com. It will say did not match any documents. That means it's not indexed in Google. Okay. But if it isn't indexed again. Like omgmachines.com, it'll, it'll come up. We got tons of pages for OMG Machines. All right, how should I approach a rehab clinic to do SEO? I would talk to uh, Cotton about anything with uh with with approaching clients. From Kathy, would you ever use a new domain for a PBN? I mean, I personally don't right now, Kathy. Uh, I know that Network Empire likes doing that. The problem is it just takes so much time and effort to build up a new domain with, with enough power. So, From William, can you show that URL structure again? It went off screen too quick. Which, which URL structure, William? Let me know from Slav. My PBN is the index, has manual action, pure spam. It only had one article on it, and it was a unique article. Surprise is a pure spam message. Your thoughts on this? Also, is it worth adding a few more articles and requesting consideration? My guess is it's algorithmic, uh, Slav. Um, still looking into why some sites get de-indexed, uh, and I'll, I'm, I'm starting to catch on to some things. 
I got some tests running now that should tell me a lot, so I'll let you know. But I'm guessing that it has nothing to do with the article you posted. Uh, posting more articles won't do anything. A reconsideration request might. I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly what they're looking at yet, but I'm, I'm getting a good idea. So, But my guess is it has absolutely nothing to do with, with the article you put up. John, FYI, HostGator is running a hosting sale, 55% off their plans. They also have the main starting eight dollars. Thanks, John. Steve, do you think sniper sites have had their day, or are they still a good way to go in terms of creating affiliate sites? Now that that can still be good, Steve. Now if you if you pick a good enough site, I think that can definitely work well. That's kind of like EMDs. I mean, you find the right keyword, and you you can make good money. From Carlos, for Amazon pages, you recommend the 5 gigs primarily, or should we set up a full-blown PBN for it? I like PBNs over anything, Carlos. From Octavio, if you don't use GSA, what do you use to do mass links? I don't do a ton of mass linking, Octavio. Um, I just analyze people that do do it. And what I'm, what I'm talking about is what works you know, with anchor text. Now, when I see people spam stuff, when I see it working is when they get the anchor text correct. But, you know, a lot of people who spam it, they, they just don't know how to get that anchor text correct. Dallas SEO, and then you went on about anchor profiles. Yeah, so what they were asking was if they have a Facebook page, how to do the anchor text. So if you had, like, facebook.com slash... This would be the URL. I'm saying if you want to be safe, you can start with like a URL link. Uh, and then you can actually go with like Dallas, maybe Dallas SEO team. Because you, you, that gets Dallas SEO in there. But it's actually also branding because that's the name of the Facebook page. And then you can do like maybe Dallas SEO team Facebook page. Uh, and then if you want to be safe, again, you can go back to just like um, maybe another URL link in a different way. Or you can just do the generic, like Facebook page. Just depends how safe you want to be. And then maybe you can hit the exact keyword. Then maybe go back to, um, you know, something generic. And th this is just the safe way of doing it. You probably could do. You probably could skip the URL link and just do these three here. Let me take this out. You could probably start with this three, these three here, and be totally fine. But again, adding in like the URL and generic type stuff just kind of helps keep you safe and keep you safe for long term. All right. Well, so we just had a bunch of questions roll in. Nice. I gotta pick up my son just a little bit, but remember, guys, I have I'm gonna be had doing a webinar Friday night covering a lot of stuff about Anchor Text and uh, some on-page optimization, PBN stuff like that. All right, from Carl, thank you for an explanation. How would you rank a site so fast for launch jack? Honestly, if it was a launch jack site where I needed to rank quickly, Carl, I'm sending PBNs directly to it. You know, I, I know I have that video talking about to be careful about that. But if it's a launch jack and I'm in a hurry, I'm sending links directly right away. From Larry, is there any advantage of having a WHM since we're being tracked at the hosting level? I mean, the advantage of a WHM is just it's just easier to manage, Larry, but it can cause footprints. So. Greg, may I ask how many PBNs do you have? A lot. Daphne. My client blog is just... Running commentary with multiple articles listed with keywords that are linked back to the money site. If the keywords are in multiple articles with a density less than two percent, could that become over optimized? Should I put each blog post on its own page on the site using the IM8 exclude pages plugin? Uh, 
No, I wouldn't say that's over optimized, Daphne. Um, in order to be over optimized off content alone, you have to be pretty high, uh, from what I've seen. Over optimization comes more from anchor tech stuff. So you should be fine. From Ben, would you please explain why, when using one feed supercharger, you create feeds for each page on the money site? It seems like these will drop off the feed as new posts are made. I mean, it depends how you set it up, Ben. Uh, but when you do that, you're still creating social links to those pages. All right. So while they're on there, they're still going to get social links. From Peter. Registered a new domain, which has old backlinks. Ran Chris Marshall's tool on it. It doesn't rank, and I think the site is penalized. What can I do to get rid of the links? Will this make the site be able to rank again? You can put them through disavow, Peter, but honestly, it's probably not worth it. Uh, depending on how important the project is and how much time you put into it. But yeah, I, I mean, to, to get rid of it, you're going to have to disavow. You know, find all the bad links, disavow. Because then when you first start SEO, how did you overcome frustration when things didn't work? I mean, just kept my mind on what I wanted to accomplish, you said. So we got a couple more here. And we'll get ready to wrap this up and we'll get ready for Friday night if anyone can make it. That'll be a pretty big series though, starting Friday night. From William, does the Death Star technique where you find a huge authority domain page authority, backlink site, and then send it to your PBNs? The juice there authority still work or do we use the DAS and social signals instead now? I mean that works, William. Um, but either either way will work. I mean it's kind of the same thing in a way, but I mean I mean it, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. It's just DAS in itself kind of just takes it a little further. That's all. I know you normally use your strongest PBN to link to your money site with your main keyword. In regards to Web 2.0, which one is your favorite? If you had to pick one, I like Weebly a lot. Weebly's really easy to use and they're strong, so. The webinar on Friday will be at 8 o'clock, Celine. Alright. One last question from Jamie. It says, could you please briefly describe the Google Fetch tool? I think that's what it's called. Thanks. Yeah, I did a video on that in the Over the Shoulder series, Jamie. Um, I believe it is... Is it video two or three? It's in the Over the Shoulder series. Uh, I show exactly how to use it and what it does and all that, Jamie. But it just basically just crawls your site very quickly. It can get you updated in the SERPs very quickly. All right. All right. And the last one from Sherilyn is if I if a site has been de-indexed, how do you get it back? Uh... I mean, reconsideration requests can work, but they're they're pretty tough, Sherlyn. So, I mean, reconsideration requests are usually the only way to get them back. All right. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I'll have this recording over to David. Remember, Friday night, uh, we will be, uh, I'll be doing, starting the March, April, May Mastery webinar series. We're not sure how many, it might just be one, might be two, might be three, however many we need. And we're really going to go in depth on, on some important stuff. All right. All right, guys, thanks for coming out. I will see you Friday night if you can make it. Talk to you soon.